Well, I'm glad you could join me today. Any of you are free, want to come over and help with the work, you're free to do that. This is another one of uh, Dr. Russ's air rifle adventures. And as you can see, I'm converting my, well, I've got two of them, the second one's over there, uh, rifle racks, so that the barrels can be pointed down rather than up. And uh, if you watch the last video, all of this is an effort to try to stay out of a repairman shop and uh, air rifles are prone to do that. In fact, it's probably the number one complaint about all rifles. And uh, uh, what's happening is that any little dirt in the barrel, but primarily some ledge uh, pieces, particles from the pellets, when the barrel is up, drop down and into the breech area. From there, into that transfer port and or any of the compression chambers, and all of a sudden you have an air gun that doesn't work. And it could have been resolved by storing the gun with the barrel down. Up to now, I've always kept the barrel down for a couple of hours after I've done my shooting. But uh, now it's come to my attention that those barrels need to be pointed down all the time. Pellets are dirty, sometimes you don't wash them all. It helps if you do. But even wash pellets can go down that barrel and this saying of uh, we got the barrel leaded in, what that really means is little pieces of lead are now into all the little craters and stuff uh, of which cheaper barrels have more of them than the expensive barrels. And if your air gun costs two, three hundred dollars, you might have one of the lesser barrels. And if your gun costs three thousand, it probably has one of the better. Nonetheless, my information is you got to keep those barrels pointed down when you're not using them. And uh, these two racks, I hope, are going to do that. Meanwhile, I'm doing something that can help you. I've had a nice meeting with uh, an engineer who uh, has one of those 3D machines. And he's seeing what he can do about coming up with a rifle rack that keeps the barrels down. One that's on the wall, one that's on the floor because uh, I can't find any that store rifles like that in any of the uh, mail order or sporting goods stores or whatever. Now you can kind of see here how many uh, air rifles I have, but uh, why don't we, we uh, go in the living room where I've stored them during this construction. You can see I've got four springers over there and uh, some air tanks and I've still got some more air tanks I've got to do. You see a lot of pellets over here and you'll see two compressors uh, over here. Um, uh, that one I think can go to 3,000 foot-pounds and this one can go to 4,500. All of which are needed for that air. And while air is cleaner than gunpowder, that doesn't mean your barrel is and it can cause problems. Before we leave the bedroom where I store the air rifles, Dr. Paul is not real happy about this part, but let me show it to you anyway. If you'll recall, all of our viewers get a 15% uh, a discount on uh, anything from the CV Life catalog, and you'll see two magnets that I've screwed in there and uh, they allow this handgun to just stick right there by the bed. Now if, uh, and they, they cost I think $7.99 or something, minus the, the discount. Over here is, uh, is uh, two forty fives that I carry if I go into certain parts of Detroit where they, they have crime all the time. People are shot and or killed in Detroit almost on a daily basis there. So if I have to go, I want some guns to go with me. Well, let's go into uh, our great room where I can show you the, the rifles that belong in that rack. What have you been doing in my living room? Well, it was, uh, it was uh, near the uh, master bedroom and so uh, They'll only be here for a while, honey. Yeah. Uh, 
Here's a, a scuba tank that we converted for air gun use. You know, scuba tanks are all different kinds of wild color, so you can see each other down about 30, 40 feet. But I like this uh, metallic gray. Well, this, uh, this made me kind of take a little inventory and count them. There's 56 air guns here. A couple of real nice Hoobins. We uh, took these on an iguana hunt, which uh, was in an earlier video. A couple spotting scopes so I can see the critters coming from quite a ways out. Uh, here's uh, a couple of Hatsons that are down here. Um, another Hatson. Here's a, a Humorex. Uh, in a, I think a 25 cal caliber and a 22. This is a semi-automatic Hatson right here. And uh, you know the Blitz can do full auto. This is semi-auto in 25. Here's what they call the AT44. I like the length of the barrel. Has a, a built-in moderator. Crossman probably makes some of the best guns out there. They make them in and they're available for years and years because of how good they are. That's an M16 look-alike right here from uh, Crossman. But I think what's really interesting about this gun is instead of a scope, I have a, uh, a red dot. Um, Avenger. That's an Avenger bullpup. I, I have two rifles. And what's nice about the Avenger is that it's the, the entry-level gun for them, about $350, and comes with, of all things, a regulator. This particular gun right here has never been fired. This is a, uh, a Nixon. And this is the gun that uh, Donnie FL is bringing out. I've been told, don't shoot it. I was able to get an advanced copy of it. They're still working on what springs are going to be on that uh, 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 internals in the gun and any other corrections before it's sold. There's a, a Gamo Boone and Crockett uh, followed by, well I always have to look at, yeah this is another Gamo but it's the 22 mag with the suppressor on the end. This is an AEA. And I think, yeah, this is the AEA 72 Zeus. This is probably the largest air gun you can buy. 72 caliber is the equivalent of a 12 gauge. So we're shooting quite a slug out there. You know, I said that wrong. This is the Zeus. That's a 50 caliber AEA. This is the 72. Uh, here is a, an AEA uh, in uh, 357. What's nice about it is we have an air compressor in the front, an air compressor in the back. Kind of two sources of air so you get twice as much. A couple of Hatsons that I really like, the Vectus, this is your lever action. You're doing with a lever what you do with a side lever or bolt. You're putting the next pellet into the breech. Uh, that would be the Hatson uh, pile driver, 50 caliber, and uh, beyond that would be uh, one of those Avengers that's in 25 caliber before they came out with the Opa. Uh One of my favorite guns is the Hatson Bull Boss, 25 caliber, just with a regulator put in it, just a great, great gun. and. For those that are budget-minded, here's an AEA Challenger. I think that's 45 caliber. Uh, you can see the adapter on the end so you can put a moderator because it makes quite a noise when you're shooting large bore guns. Just a quick glance here at this table. <clears throat> I haven't done many pistols, but there's nine of them here. And all I can say is we will be doing them soon. Uh, here's a, a Hatson Bully down here. Here's another Bull Boss, but not in the wood stock. This has the uh, uh, poly stock in it. Another Terminator, but this one doesn't have gas at both ends, just the front. 
and the back has a stock much like you'd find on an M16. FX seems to be winning all the contests and for competition so I've I've got three FX's now and there's one there and uh, this is uh, the 22 uh, uh, Avenger right over here uh, here is a uh, a Crossman and this is your 357 they now make it in a 357 and or a 45 I love the 357 this is uh, an interesting gun here uh, you know I have a couple of friends in the industry uh, Donnie FL who's bringing out that uh, Nixon over there and uh, uh, Zach Matthews of Ares and this is the gun he's bringing out also in 25 caliber this has a regulator nice bottle on it camo this is my only camo gun I got a, a scope put on it but uh, we'll be showing you more of that one soon it's it's ready to rock and roll I believe this is the gamo Maxim uh, this is a Hatson bull boss uh, a bull pup and then this is a really interesting gun right here Humorex came out with this and I got it for about three hundred dollars but it doesn't shoot pellets it shoots arrows and not at 300 feet a second 450 feet so I have two crossbows uh, I shot an elk it's actually behind you with a regular longbow that thing looked like it was a porcupine before he finally fell um, the meat was delicious uh, now I'm going to use air guns to shoot my arrows there's 10 states already Michigan is not one of them uh, that shoots these arrows if you will uh, here's another FX this is a Sig Sauer this is a, a rather interesting gun right here uh, semi-automatic uh, I think this might even be automatic I haven't shot this gun yet but we'll be doing a, uh, a review on it I think what's really rather interesting is uh, that the thing works and it's regulated here uh, the interesting thing about it we've got a dog <laughs> might have puppies tonight that's what you hear but it just has the one tank on the back you can put larger tanks on the back uh, but it only shoots at 700 feet a second now I consider that my low end 700 feet a second uh, I like shooting around 850 to 950 and here's a another FX and you'll see the fat boy su uh, su suppressor on the end of it the, up there this is the one that was in a video not long ago where Izzy put on a Saber tactical stock and uh, got this thing ready for competition now all we have to do is get me ready for competition let's take a look in the kitchen okay here is very pregnant Abby and Dr. Paula Stay. is going to clean okay. her eyes this isn't her most fun thing but she gets little boogers in her eyes that I have to get out Got that one. Good girl. Now let's get the other one. Good girl, Abby. Dear, good girl. Do you have babies? Oh, yeah, she's got Do you have babies? Oh. They're coming, I'm sure. Oh. They say sometimes this week, 8 to 10. Uh, Paula, you have a, a second daughter back here, and she wants her ears closed, uh, her eyes closed. Clear too. Mercy, do you want your eyes? Come here. Come. You gotta sit. 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 Let's do your eyes. Oh, good girl. Good girl. Good girl. All done. All done. Can you shake? Hmm? There's your humor. Humor for the day. Good. So, 
if you ever have a booger in your eye, just come on over. Dr. Paula will show you exactly how to get it out. You know, a lot of people talk about maintenance and, uh, you know, there's some gun repair schools, but there isn't one for air guns. It's something you kind of learn on your own. Uh, that would be helpful if you knew about powder guns. But a lot of people are self-taught. I've had people write and say, oh, the brand X quit working on me and now it's just a paperweight. Now it's just in the closet. And I thought, gee, I think it's still a valuable gun. Number one, it probably can be fixed, but let's pretend negatively that it can't. Well, that's the gun you want to learn on. You take it completely apart and learn more about air guns and be better off for it. You know, with 56 air guns, uh, you, you kind of have to be your own gunsmith a lot of the times and keep these guns out of uh, the repair shop. You never know when you're going to get them back or how expensive it's going to be. So let me just show you a little bit of stuff that's going on here at all times. This happens to be uh, a, a Crossman multi-shot. It's like the, the gambles, if you will. And I took it hunting. It's very nicely zeroed in. And I had a scope on it. I mean, a, a sling on it. And uh, it broke loose from up here. And then I had to carry it. Uh, before you say, poor pity you, I was already carrying a lawn chair, a seat cushion, a thermos for hot coffee, and it helped by having that air gun, any gun, on a, a sling. So I picked up some of these Picatinny rails, these short ones, and I put one on each side, and I figured, you know, I'll put some epoxy glue on it, and that's when it broke off. So what have I done now? to make sure it never breaks off again. Well, I decided to put in some uh, uh, rivets right where the screws are, because as you can see, there's just a small space back there. And by getting the right rivet and put it in the hole, now I had to take a Dremel tool to shave off the part of the the nail here that was protruding because it was sticking out there like that. Uh, so I used a bit of a Dremel tool. Uh, and then I found these. Now these are rivets too, but they're the plastic type. They, they're used on a lot of that cowling ar around your engine uh, when you've got the hood up. And I didn't use them here, but the next time I want to put a Picatinny rail in there, I probably will do that. Now, look at all these these uh, rubber rings. I actually have three boxes. I have two others and this one. And uh, I've saved all of the little packages and wrote on them what gun they belong to. But I just felt a little more comfortable with these as a backup, if you will. So we put that on now with the rivets. I think it'll hold. I had tried the silicone glue. It didn't uh, hold. But this uh, JB Weld, you know, epoxy, two parts, that was pretty good. But that's what broke off. That's why I went to the, the rivets, if you will. Now let's see what else. All of my little projects are right here. Uh, this CV Life, I, a lot of you are really enjoying it. Um, I've got here a, uh, a red dot and a laser. And the red dot can be whatever color I want it to be. Uh, but not only that, but when you screw this in, rather than turn it on or turn it off, you can put this little contact point back by your trigger. And when you hit it, it turns it on. And when you hit it, it turns it off without taking your hand away from the trigger. Uh, that's going to go on one of my rifles. I haven't decided which one yet. Uh, this red dot from CV Life came in. Boy, what a nice case that was. Uh, but this doesn't have the laser. It's strictly the red dot. It's going to be going on one of my pistols. See, so you want a red dot instead of the scope when you have a fast-moving targets, squirrels, etc. Uh, that's where I want these is on my squirrel guns. Now, I told you 
and this is getting some of that nice housing. Uh, this happens to be a uh, very inexpensive red dot scope. I think this is about $39. It's a 3 by 9 and with a 40 millimeter objective lens there. And this is a medium length. And I already have the short length on this particular Crossman. Uh, this has the laser. Uh, it has a nice scope. And uh, you can break this bear all you want and it's going to be out of the way of the scope. But this medium size CV Life scope, is, now it doesn't have any bells or whistles, just $39 minus 15% by the way. And it's still out of the way of breaking this uh, barrel down and putting another clip of uh, 10 rounds in it. So uh, this hopes, hopefully gives you just a pretty good idea of some of the projects that I'm working on. Now, this, uh, these spacers I just got in the mail today. And uh, I can't show you on this gun, but where the uh, the the uh, barrel is coming real close to a PCP compression tank, uh, there could be a little vibration in there. It can actually rub things you don't want to have happen. So these are spacers uh, that will uh, separate that compression tank and the barrel. So that just gives you a quick idea. Well. Uh, let me get up here for a second. I've been working with some rubber. And if you'll recall, I've always told you when you shoot air guns, there's basically four sounds. When your ear is up against this stock, that's the loudest noise you hear. Real ping as the, that transfer port and that uh, spring on it hammers home, uh, allowing just so much gas to go in. So. Uh, I'm coming up with a piece of rubber that can go on there and insulate my ear from sound number one. Sound number two, ping and a pop. And the pop here is as that air forces that pellet out and much like burning air of a powder gun, the non-burning air of an air gun makes a pop as it pushes the pellet or slug out the front. And that can be the, the, the noise that's very, very concerning to neighbors. And so we want suppressors, we want moderated barrels, and we want to keep the velocity of our pellets and slugs under 1,050 feet, best under 1,000. And that stops this second noise, uh, not just the pop, but the, the zing that follows it. Ping, pop, zing. That's the speed. And that creates the third sound. You want to avoid that if you can. And the fourth sound, stop. That's where that pellet or slug hits your, your target down there. Now it could be a thunk, hits the side of a woodchuck or something like a wild boar, or a good target that you've set up. You want to make sure that it's a safe target, it's a safe backstop because there's a sound there and that could get some neighbors upset too. So ping, pop, zing, stop. Those are the four sounds that we're constantly working on. Now I found these uh, tripods at a flea market and here's a knee pad I ordered over the internet and I'm going to put it on this one for a turkey shoot where I can just have a, a low scope and a, and a low uh, barrel rest right in front of me uh, when I hunt turkey. Now this is where you go after deer, antelope, elk, and uh, what we have at the top is uh, the brand name is, is Boggs, and uh, I'm trying to think what they call that, but anyway it's a it's a clamp that can hold your rifle horizontal waiting for that animal to come about. Underneath it here, I have a, a, a camera adapter so that I can aim the rifle exactly where I want to and feel the solidity 
of that uh, that God is interesting. Well, I think that shares with you all the projects I'm working on, and I'm not a gunsmith, but I love getting into guns, radios, whatever, and trying to get them fixed and uh, keeping them out of a repair shop. Uh, if you thought that this video had any value, give us a thumbs up. Know that if you leave a comment, I'm the guy who answers them. And there's none too dumb, too stupid, too whatever. Uh, I've got some people that ramble for a thousand uh, typed words. That's fine. I'll answer them. And uh, most important, we've got, uh, I think this is video number 104. We've only been at this three years. Um, but we've got 104 videos done now. And if you hit that uh, little round picture of me, you will access our whole channel. I strongly recommend that you check on the one about scopes and bipods and slings and all. Uh, so you'll learn how to order things from uh, this company named CV Life. And uh, Jill Blake is at the other end and she's uh, got a warehouse in Vegas and she's sending these things out real fast. But you get that discount. Uh, and uh, my next video I'll share some things you may want to get a hold of Zach Matthews for down in Georgia and uh, Donnie FL down in Florida. Meanwhile, you have a good day. Stay safe, stay sharp, and silent. <laughs>